Hello there, and welcome to my um, short presentation on innovation in the English wine industry. My name is Paul Harley, and I'm the Wine Business Programme Manager at Plumpton College down in Sussex. Let's get started. So there's been evidence of winemaking in, in England for centuries and centuries, but our modern industry really has come about since the 80s and 90s with a raft of plantings, particularly focused on sparkling wine in the 1990s. Um, but over the last few years, the industry has been going from strength to strength. And one of the key trends has been innovation, which not many people have, have been that aware of. So what I'm going to do is run through a few of those key innovative uh, drivers for the trade. So first off, we've got um, prestigious wines. We've got new um, interpretations of old school winemaking techniques. We've got new locations and business models for the producers themselves. And we've got also some exciting grape varieties coming online also. So first off, we've got this idea that English wine, particularly sparkling wine, is becoming um, more premium. Now, we have a, a raft of excellent brands across the sparkling wine range coming from England and Wales at the moment. But we're now starting to see an upper level, a prestige um, uh, range of cuvées being released from across the country. So with Champagne, we have the likes of Krug and Cristal, Dom Perignon. And now in England and Wales, we see brands such as Ridgeview with their Oak Reserve sparkling wine. We've got Nye Timbers, um, fantastic 1086 prestige sparkling wine but also we've got still wines that are, are really starting to hit the highlights so we've got for example Chapel Downs Kit Coty Chardonnay and it's not all sparkling and white wines we also have some excellent red wines and one of the real um, industry champions at the moment is Gusborne's Pinot Noir. So another area where we're seeing some real innovation is with regards to wine styles so we are a marginal climate in, in England. It's, it's quite cool and it can be quite wet. And that can put a lot of pressures on, on viticulture and also winemaking options for estates. But we're starting to see some really exciting wines coming through. Um, a, a traditional um, established producer that's making organic wines would be someone like Davenport. And this is their Horsmanden Dry White blend, which is fantastic. We also have um, producers like Westwell here um, playing around with and, and testing out what is possible with um, fermenting on skins and, and um, making wines with a little bit more texture and a little bit more richness. So the, the era of just very, very clean primary fruit driven wines from England is, is actually no more. We've got some really concentrated, complex wines, which mean that they are often uh, a lot more food friendly. Than, than how they would have been uh, previously. We also have, uh, from a sparkling wine perspective, we have uh, Charmat method sparkling wines coming into the market. So Charmat method, tank method sparkling wine, which is the sort of style that we see with things like Prosecco, which is obviously very, very successful in the UK market. So we have Fitz uh, with this example. So Fitz based down in West Sussex, but you've also got someone like Flint uh, up in Norfolk playing and producing excellent tank method sparkling wines. And then you've got Hattingley Valley over in Hampshire who are making a wonderful dessert wine from grapes that are cryogenically frozen. So we have an ice wine style product. So you get your grapes, you freeze them, take them down to about minus eight, minus 10. And then when you press them, all of the frozen water in the grapes pops out. And what you ferment is just the pure nectar from the grapes. And then you get these hedonic, rich, sweet dessert wines. And so our final uh, innovations for this little micro presentation are um, business models are changing. So the, uh, the era of just having uh, vineyards with wineries um, attached to them as a sort of default uh, business model is now really no longer the case. We have some very innovative business models in place, um, no, no more so than uh, urban wineries. So in London, We've got Renegade and we've got um, Black Book. So this is Black Book, which is um, you know, based, based in, in central London, which is really going to have some exciting opportunities post lockdown for tourism. So, you know, one of the, the biggest 
Um, risks with, with wine tourism in the UK is how do you appeal to international visitors? Because our vineyards are located in sometimes difficult to find locations. Difficult, you need to get a car. Um, they're not always served very well by public transport. So if you can bring the winery to the tourist, you could be really onto something very special moving forward. And our final innovation are grape varieties. And the industry has been um, investigating and experimenting with these um, new um, these new varieties, they're known as peewees, and peewee uh, as a term basically relates to the grapes being fungus resistant. And that means that viticulture is a little bit less stressful. They are hardy, more hardy grape varieties, so they can cope with our cooler, damper climates, which means we can get good yields of healthy fruit um, and have the opportunity to make some interesting wines with these grape varieties, which you might not have come across yet, but you will do in the future. So that's everything that I wanted to cover in this little mini presentation for you. If you're interested in uh, what we do down here at Plumpton and you want to find out more, please feel free to drop me an email and I can talk to you about our different wine business degrees. We're the only provider of these degrees in the United Kingdom. Uh, we have a two year program in uh, a foundation degree in wine business, but we also have the three year BA honours in international wine business. And I'm more than happy to talk to you about our modules and what those programmes cover. Um, thank you very much uh, and thank you for listening.